Hey everyone, Couch Investor back to another video for today and back with another end phase one. So is end phase finally a buy right now after that bounce of the $120 support line? Well, we're going to have a look. We have some analyst notes, upgrades, downgrades. We're going to have a look at the graph later in this video as well. I'm going to share my thoughts on the current situation of Enphase, especially now that we've gotten some indication by Fed Chair Jerome Powell about how long interest rates will remain high because that is an issue for a company like Enphase. Like many other companies, the auto industry is also hurting because of high interest rates. But I do want to remind the viewer about the share buybacks. So last quarter, they said that they bought $200 million worth of stock, which is 1.25 million shares at approximately $159. But they said that they're disciplined about it. Now, they also announced another $1 billion for share buybacks, considering that they're generating about $200 million of free cash flow every quarter. But don't expect them to spend that $1 billion in one quarter. In my opinion, since the stock bounced off that $120 line, I do think that they have been buying some shares lately. I don't know how many, but that's just my opinion. But I do think that we're going to see probably another 200 million, maybe even more worth of share buybacks in this quarter. Remains to be seen. We'll have to wait another month or so. Now, with regards to the sales and EPS estimates for end phase right now for fiscal year 2023, with regards to sales, it's expected to grow 13.49%, then reacceleration in fiscal year 2024, 19.78%, then fiscal year 2025, 28.36%. Of course, of course, these numbers might change. If we go into a recession, if rates stay higher for a long period of time, if we had some rate cuts as well, those numbers can change. Now, with regards to EPS, that's actually supposed to grow much faster. Yes, fiscal year 2023, a bit slower, 8.1%, but then 24, 25, that's 31 and 30% growth. So that's pretty nice, especially for a company where if you look at the headlines, if you look at the sentiment around, you would think that this company is probably going out of business. Now, there are some risks attached to it, 100%. I mean, Chinese competitors race to the bottom with regards to pricing. Those are things that you have to consider, but also considering the good place that this company is at, the higher margins that they have, I mean, the whole ecosystem, you have to balance all of that out. Now, before I continue, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, we'd really appreciate that. We're very close to reaching 30,000 subscribers. So let's try and reach that by the end of the year. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. Now, before jumping into the analyst upgrade and downgrade, we also had a director, Roger Sturman here, buy around $4 million worth of shares. I mean... There are many reasons why insiders sell shares. There is probably only one reason why insiders buy shares. All right, so let's start with the upgrade here from Seaport Research. They upgraded the stock to buy from neutral with a $185 price target. Oh, and by the way, currently the average price target sits at around $185, which means that currently the price to that target is a difference of $49. Pretty good upside. Of course, again, these things can change. You've got upgrades, you've got downgrades, but this is the current state of the price target. The analyst says here that in Europe, it remains a robust growth trajectory through 2025, and the company should achieve average revenue growth for 24-25 of at least 35%, helped by its established presence in France and Benelux. Benelux is Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg as it captured significant share in Germany, partially by leveraging its home energy management system offering. Now it says here in the United States, he believes a rebound will take hold by the middle of next year, saying the California market will have adjusted to the economics of the new NEM 3.0 solar billing structure. A simulation of the Inflation Reduction Act will strengthen the response to the IRA's investment tax credit incentives. Now I want to go back to the earnings call. So in Q2, they had a record quarter for their international revenue, primarily due to the growth in Europe and Australia. In the US, their revenue decreased 12% sequentially and decreased 1% year over year. The overall sell-through of microinverters in the US was up 2% compared to Q1. Now they say here that their revenue in Australia more than doubled year over year. They started shipping their new IQ battery 5P to Australia during the second quarter. Keep that in mind. 
Moving on to a downgrade from tourist securities from buy to hold with a $135 price target slashed from $210, seeing potential for a more prolonged recovery in the US residential solar markets than currently priced into shares. Now here it talks about the rollout for the third generation of IQ Battery 5P in Australia, US, Puerto Rico, and plans of this rollout in Europe later this year. But he is saying that while expecting Enphase to play a meaningful role in the theme of home electrification over the next coming years, the analyst said he sees potential for a prolonged recovery in US residential storage acting as a headwind to shares in coming quarters. Now, you might see this as a downgrade, so it's automatically negative. In my opinion, it's a downgrade because of the headwinds that he's taking into consideration outweigh probably the tailwinds. Again, he's thinking here about a short-term period, not a long-term period. And with regards to Australia, they made this announcement that Enphase Energy expands solar and battery storage deployment in Australia. As I showed you just before, Australia is a market that is growing extremely fast for the company. So this was about to happen. I think this is good for the overall business. You expand your market in an already growing market right now. So I'll go over a couple of comments here. Enphase Energy Systems provide exceptional value to Australian homeowners. Their safety, reliability, and versatility reduce reliance on the grid and unlock long-term bill savings as energy prices continue to increase unabated. We are proud to offer Enphase industry-leading home energy solutions to homeowners across northern Queensland. The high-performing home solar and battery technologies help to deliver exceptional reliability, which is a critical requirement in a regional Australia where extreme weather, vast distances, and rural living demand maximum energy security. We've seen this with Tesla as well. Australia is a pretty good market to start your energy business. Now, remember, we talked about risk at the start, whether it's Chinese competitors, Solar Edge, Tesla, I mean, race to the bottom when it comes to pricing. Well, let's read this. No other home energy solution offers the level of modularity, redundancy, and monitoring as the combination of the Enphase IQ Battery 5P and IQ8 micro inverters. The Enphase energy system is easily expandable as a homeowner's energy needs to evolve, and the user-friendly Enphase app provides advanced monitoring capabilities and total system control. Australian homeowners are increasingly participating in the transition to solar and battery-enabled home electrification. We are proud to partner with leading installers in Australia to provide a seamlessly integrated home energy production and management platform that delivers unparalleled energy use optimization and payback. So, while Chinese competitors might copy this product for maybe cheaper, Who's to say that the quality is the same? Who's to say that they have a robust ecosystem, an ecosystem that is reliable, that is safe for you to use throughout your home, your business, whatever? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I do think that a lot of people, if you're paying a lot of money to install these types of systems, you are going to go with the one where the quality matches the price rather than, oh, we're going to go for the lowest price because that's what we want, just the lower price. I think a lot of people will start to understand that just because the price is lower doesn't mean that you get the same quality. Sometimes it's worth paying a bit more to get that insurance that the quality is there. And so last thing here, the graph. As you can see, we saw a good green candle here. This is on the weekly chart at just $120, or so. We've seen that line as a support in the past 2021 May and January 2022, I fully expect this to hold unless there is some really bad news coming out for this specific company. Currently, I do think that we've got a pretty positive reaction from the market here. Let's wait and see what happens on Friday, but I don't think this candle will turn red in one day. When it comes to RSI, it is low, it is not oversold. Looking at the MACD is still bearish right now, but we are on track to turn bullish if we can have another green candle maybe next week. And so that will be it for this video. So are you a buyer of Enphase at these prices? Have you been buying? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.